Let me first explain a few common terms. What is an application pipeline? First, an ASP application receives an HTTP request from a remote client. Then, this request is processed through a chain of function delegates. Each function passes the context to its successor. Finally, a response is sent back to the caller. This sequence of calls is called the application pipeline. What is a middleware? Each function in the chain is called a middleware. What is short circuiting? A function can short circuit the pipeline by not calling its successor. None of the succeeding functions executes. The response is sent back from the point of short circuit. As an example, an authentication middleware can short circuit on failure. Another example is a static file middleware that can short circuit to prevent any further processing. What is a terminal middleware? A terminal middleware does not have a successor. It is usually the last component of the pipeline. But a component that short circuits is also a terminal. A request delegate is central to the concept of middleware. This is an extract from the MSDN documentation. A request delegate accepts an HTTP context as a parameter. It accepts just one parameter and executes asynchronously. It uses the HTTP context to process a request. In this example, the second parameter of a function map post is a request delegate that has been passed in line. The HTTP context is writing a message to the response. We shall later discuss many such examples in detail. Run, map, and use are the building blocks of any middleware component. All of them are extension methods that are being discussed next. Let us write the simplest possible application. It will contain just one component. Just the terminal middleware. Terminal middleware can be implemented with run. Let us have a look at this method in detail. This is an extract from the MSDN documentation. The run method adds a terminal middleware to an application pipeline. It is an extension method on iApplication Builder. It accepts a request delegate, which, as we have already seen, provides an HTTP context. The HTTP context can, then, be used to process the request. Create a default .NET Core web application. Let us modify the startup class. Modify the class to contain just the configure method. As we explained in one of the previous lectures, the iApplication Builder is available as a parameter in the configure method. Next, we make a call to the run method to build our terminal. The run method accepts a request delegate. The runtime provides an HTTP context to our request delegate. Lastly, the context is used to write a message to the response. This is the output display. Next, we write an application with two middleware components. The first component will be chained to the second. Chaining can be done with the use extension method. Let us have a look at the details of this method. Use is an extension method on iApplication Builder. It accepts a function delegate as the only parameter. This is a better view of the function delegate. The function delegate accepts an HTTP context as the first parameter. And the second parameter is yet another delegate. Task is the return type of the delegate, which means it has to execute asynchronously. 
Next, let us examine the finalized code. I have shown the startup class. Nothing else has been changed. The class contains just the configure method with a logger and the iApplication builder. The MSDN documentation suggests that the final response should be sent from the terminal middleware only. So I have used a string builder to build my response as we travel from one middleware to another. This is the first middleware component. And this is the terminal middleware component. Let us see the first component in detail. The use extension has been used to build the first middleware. This is the inline function delegate that we saw on the MSDN documentation page earlier. The first parameter is the HTTP context. The second parameter is the delegate used to perform the chaining. The call is asynchronous. This is the call that causes the chaining to occur. The call leads to the succeeding terminal component. The terminal writes the response. Notice that this logger code executes after the terminal returns. This is the display on the browser. And this is the logger display. We have seen use and run extension methods. Let us discuss map now. Map is used to branch the application pipeline depending on the request path. It is used to add routing to our ASP application. Map is also an extension method on iApplication Builder. The first argument is the path to be matched, like, for example, slash product slash software. The second argument is a delegate that receives iApplication Builder for building the pipeline for the matched path. Let us see an example. This is, again, the startup class containing the configure method. We use the map to channel a response depending on the path specified in the incoming URL. This reminds us of the switch statement in our programming languages. The last run is the unhandled path, analogous to the default label in a switch. This is the display for an unmatched root. And this is the display for a matched root. UseWin and MapWin are also extension methods like Use, Map, and Run. They branch the pipeline on the basis of a Boolean returned by a predicate. After execution, they rejoin the main pipeline. Explicit chaining is not required. Have a look at the UseWin method here. It consists of a predicate that returns a Boolean value. The second argument is a branch. The branch executes only if the predicate returns true. Explicit chaining is not required. The main pipeline is automatically joined and the context passed to the next component. Mapwin also branches on the basis of a predicate. Please refer MSDN documents for more detail. Extension methods like use, map, and run alone are not sufficient for writing a secure and robust application pipeline. A lot of supporting and additional code is required to build an efficient pipeline. To solve this problem, 
The ASP.NET Core library provides various pre-written middleware components. Let us have a look at them. This is a list of some of the ready-made middleware components. The configure method of the startup class should call them in the same order. The order is critical for security, performance, and functionality. The exception middleware should be the first one. HSTS and HTTPS redirection are protocol-related components. Static files are served by short-circuiting the remaining pipeline. These are for routing and authentication. And these two are for session and endpoint routing. Later we shall discuss what is endpoint routing. Let us have a look at the startup class generated by the Visual Studio. I think now this code should be clear to you. This is the code that Visual Studio generates for the default ASP.NET Core application. Finally, let us discuss what is endpoint routing. This is the code generated by the default Visual Studio template. Scroll towards the end of this method and locate use endpoints. Endpoint routing is implemented with the use endpoints component. Use endpoints is a terminal middleware. It uses map for branching and routing the requests. Use endpoints works only if use routing is also in the pipeline. This is a terminal branch for an HTTP GET request for the home page. And this is for the HTTP POST request. This is for the MVC controller and action routing, a topic that needs a separate discussion. The use endpoints method can be customized as per the requirements. Thanks for watching this tutorial.